Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think we would like to share how Indonesia on its path to universal health coverage. Uh, I would like to uh, present my presentation, situation on universal health coverage in Indonesia a decade ago, then evolution, then outlook into the future factor of success and recommendation for Bangladesh maybe. So this is uh, Indonesia, uh, an archipelago, uh, with, uh, located between Asia and Australia. We consisted of 17,000 islands. It is uh, always many islands and most of our area is water. So if we need water, yeah, you come to Indonesia. And yeah, I will not uh, talk about this. And Actually, now we are also trying Indonesia's role in positioning and advocating universal health coverage at global level because, as you know, that uh, President of uh, Republic Indonesia as well as uh, David Cameron, the Prime Minister of UK, as well as also the President of Liberia as the co-chair in developing draft of post-MDGs agenda, and we are trying to put universal coverage as one of the agenda. And uh, at, actually, when Indonesia is the member of Foreign Policy and Global Health Initiative, we drafted together with other member countries to make universal health coverage as the resolution of United Nations, and this was accepted. And we see here... Uh, uh, oh, Universal health coverage is the most powerful concept that public health has to offer. Because this is the mechanism Thank you. Yeah, okay. to implement the right to health, to implement equity. Now, universal health coverage is, you know, uh, something that needs to be homegrown. What do I mean by that? It is up to the political leaders and the citizens of a country to decide on how to start and then how to progress. There is no one-size-fits-all model. Countries must take into account their you know, historical development, their health system capacities, and also their ability uh, in terms of the scheme and the scope of coverage to move uh, over. So th those who are interested can read in the web of WSO for in detail. Again, I do not want to talk about this because uh, Dr. Samin already mentioned this, but the important thing is three dimensions which we can use as an indicator where actually we are achieving universal coverage or not, as the percentage of membership, uh, how high the benefit package, and the financial protection. So based on these three indications, then we compare uh, member countries uh, and ASEAN countries, uh, Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam, and also here Bangladesh. But of course, that uh, I have difficulty to find the health service coverage. But I know exactly the the population is almost uh, I think number two after Indonesia, maybe because uh, we have uh, many uh, population. But here we see that uh, Malaysia actually tax-based system. But out of pocket, see, still 40%. So as mentioned actually by Samin. And Thailand, Indonesia, yeah, Indonesia actually, in, when it was written, this can be read in uh, Lancet Journal, published in January 2011. But this data was 2010. When 2010, Indonesian coverage is uh, 48 but now it's 60, 68, that is the newest one. And in Indonesia, the out-of-pocket uh, now is 30%. So we can compare it with other countries. And our situation actually a decade ago, population coverage, as mentioned by Paul this morning, 11%, something like 22 million. Then in that time, or before, out-of-pocket is as high as 70%. 
and now is uh, 30%. And for poor people at that time, we conducted a program, what we call it social safety net for 36 million people with high cost sharing and the rest have to pay. So that time NGO, they always criticized government and said that in Indonesia, the poor is forbidden to get sick, something like that. But of course, uh, that is uh, 10 years ago. And we have evolution for universal health coverage in Indonesia, that is the major milestone. 1969, civil servant benefit scheme run by ASCAS, then 70, health card, then 90, uh, managed care system was introduced, and we call it uh, JPKM. Then social security for formal sector employees, 1992. 98, when economic uh, crisis, as I mentioned before, we introduced social safety net program. Then 2004, uh, because of uh, a commitment of the uh, political uh, decision makers, then uh, we, Indonesian enacted national social security law. Not only health, but health is the priority. Then 2005, health insurance for the poor. So we can see in that time only 36 million people. Then increased to be 76.4 million people and now increased to be 86.4 million people. And those, uh, the poor and near poor, everything is paid by government. Then 2008, implementing prospective payment system we call it INADRG, prospective payment system, and capitation. Of course, it is not easy because we have to deal uh, with uh, doctors, uh, physicians, and uh, hospital managers. In 2010, we introduced what we call it JAMPERSA. It is health insurance for pre pregnant women and for when antenatal care, delivery, and postnatal care. Then 2011, because up to 2004, 2011, is still debating because there is no law on reg regulating on health insurance carrier. Then 2011, we have new law, uh, law on health insurance uh, carriers, in which we would like only have one insurance carrier. Although now, currently, we have actually uh, many carriers. Then what is the impact of uh, social health insurance for the poor? So we can see 2004 compared to 2007 increased so much, so many, you know, something like 300 uh, percent uh, in patient. And out patient, uh, I'm sorry, out of pocket uh, reduced and then the coverage uh, increased. And this is our future look. Uh, we would like to have a roadmap and this roadmap already as a consensus by many stakeholders and they agreed to achieve this. So started in 2014 and will finish 2019. But of course in 2013 now, we already reached 68% or something like 162 million people. And that is about the health insurance carrier because we have many informal, formal, then civil scheme, benefit scheme, and, uh, you know, I'm forced. So this, all schemes, we trying step by step, much to be one scheme. Of course, it is not easy because like uh, uh, Philippines already reached that, but Thailand now still three schemes. And maybe Germany also still many, many carriers, 120, 120 carriers. And Indonesia with uh, 240 million people will have and dream uh, to have only one uh, scheme. So of course it is big task. This is our future referral health system. So everyone has to go to primary care first before going to uh, the higher level of care. And implementation, when we have social security, then that time we debate what are the function of Minister of Health, whether Minister of Health is, should be closed and also, uh, you know, provincial health office, because everything is already taken by, uh, uh, we call it PPGS Kesehatan, it is the health insurance carrier. But no, actually, Minister of Health is still there. Uh, it is very important, especially for vice minister, otherwise, you know, if it is stopped, then <laughs> maybe we'll confuse. But anyhow, I would like to mention here, there are three stakeholders, important stakeholders. The carrier, then health facilities, doctors, then health insurance members. And these three 
stakeholders usually have their own and different interests. BPJS Kesehatan or Health Insurance Carrier want all people are paying premium. Health facilities want to be paid higher incentive, but the members want, if possible, not only to pay, but they got many things, everything, something like that. So therefore, regulator must be there to regulate so that we can get uh, a condition in which it is win-win solution among these stakeholders. And what are the critical success factors, if we can say it? First is about leadership. Leadership is very important, as you know. Then political commitment, meaning not only sufficient fund, but also sustainable that already uh, comments by one of our uh, you know, uh, uh, audience when the you know, development partners will living, then how they will always sustain. It is big jobs. And again, establishing laws and regulation. It is also very, very important. Creating and facilitating critical mass of experts, alumni of, uh, you know, health economic institution or institution of health economic is very important to make a network, to work together, and then stakeholders interested in social health insurance. For example, uh, in Indonesia, the GIZ also facilitating the expert uh, to work together. Myself, actually, already sent to study that time also by GIZ, especially Dr. Paul. Then technical capacity and system design from the beginning. It is very important. When you design, implement it already, but design is not well designed, this will be a problem in the future. Learning experience and running different scheme of the past is also uh, one of our success factor. Preparing, enhancing health infrastructures, including human resource and health. Of course, it is very important. Education, advocacy, awareness of various stakeholders. Then the last one, our recommendation for Bangladesh strategy, of course it is subject to be discussed further. First is strong leadership, stability and political commitment, meaning political commitment not only allocate the money, but first should be understood and consensus achieved by all stakeholders and then sufficient and sustainable budget is very important. Then uh, creating a point of critical mass. So I saw here that the alumni of uh, Institute of Health Economic is already 400. Yeah? It is actually huge. But the problem is if, if they are not here, it is the problem. So then we can uh, you know, make a network and working together as a critical mass to influence the government. Not only government, of course, civil society. Then education, advocacy, and public debate. So how we will debate? Like today, I think it's debate, but then how today debate can be transformed to the community at large, but also then translated into the policy making process. Then they will make an action. And laws, regulation, and start to cover civil servant. It is easier way to do it. And the poor, then formal sector, and the last one is, of course, informal sector. And benefit package, this morning also was discussed, whether how much is the benefit package. I think it is better to give small first, like Indonesia is overstretched. So now we are, you know, have difficulties to little bit, uh, you know, reduce the benefit package because too large. Everything is covered, almost everything, then it is not good. Uh, you can start it, like in pay, for, for, for example, start from inpatient. I think that is all, and I hope it is uh, in time. Thank you very much.